Hey guys, so this week we will be covering chapter 13, which is correlation and linear regression. So the goal is to get through most of chapter 13 today, and then we can finish it up on Thursday and leave time for review questions or homework questions, whatever you guys may be confused about. These are gonna be our learning objectives. Okay, so what is correlation analysis? Um, correlation analysis is a group of techniques we use that measure the relationship between two variables. It'll tell you, um, we can use correlation analysis to tell us the strength of this relationship, whether it's strong or weak, positive or negative. Uh, so for example, what I mean by that, if we were looking at the two variables of someone's height and someone's shoe size, um, correlation analysis will be able to tell us if it's a strong positive relationship. So yes, as you get taller, your shoe size also increases um, or vice versa if it were to be negative. This is done graphically through a scatter diagram or a scatter plot. So your independent variable in the example I gave, it would be your height would go on the x-axis and then your dependent variable, the shoe size would go on the y-axis. Uh, this is an example the textbook uses. Um, if you need more, more practice to work through it, feel free to go through these examples. Um, so the correlation coefficient is the number that we use that actually tells us the strength of the linear relationship between those two variables. Um, so it's identified as R. So if you ever see a question saying solve for R or R equals this, um, know that it's your correlation coefficient. It can range from negative one to one. Um, so if it's zero, that means there's no association. If it's a positive one, that means that it's a strong positive relationship. And then same holds true for negative one, it would be a strong negative relationship. Um, so this graph just summarizes the different ranges of the correlation. So for example, something with an R value of 0.5 would have a moderate positive correlation. Um, and then obviously as it gets closer to one, we can say that it's a strong positive correlation. So you can see in these graphs down below, the very first one, it doesn't look like those two variables have anything in common. The dots are all over the place. In the second graph, um, you can tell that there's definitely a negative trend, um, but the dots aren't exactly closely clustered together like they are in the last graph, which shows a strong positive correlation. Okay, so to solve for R, we're gonna use this equation. Um, right off the bat, you know we need to find X bar, Y bar, the standard deviation for X and the standard deviation for Y. Um, for some of the questions, we, you might be given some of these values, um, but otherwise, if you're not, you'll need to solve for them. Okay, and then once we find our R value, we can test the significance of it. So in the example that the textbook uses, um, they had an R value of 0 0.865, which is relatively strong. However, their sample size was only 15 people. So they're looking at, could the result of this be due to a sampling error? So we've done this before in previous chapters where we have our null hypothesis and decide whether or not to reject it or fail to reject it um, based on our test statistic and our determination value. So you'll be asking the question, could there be zero correlation in the population from the sample that they selected? So rho will represent the correlation or P, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and then you'll conduct a hypothesis test. So for uh, the previous question, they're looking at rho equals zero. There is correlation, the correlation in the population is zero or rho does not equal zero. Um, they'll select the level of significance we'll use. Um, and then you'll, Select the test statistic using your t-table. Um, remember when you're doing these problems, it's important to recognize the sign of your null and alternate hypothesis because this is an equal sign. We know we're gonna be looking at a two-tailed distribution. So we need to make sure that the significance level is 0 0.05 for a two-tailed distribution, not a one-tail. Um, and then once we have our test statistic, we can formulate our decision rule and decide whether to reject it or fail to reject it. Um, so in this problem, they work through it. So feel free to use this if you want more practice.
So Top Hat was giving me some difficulty showing the question. Um, so I just rewrote all of the data down here. But basically, a local hotel derives its revenue from its hotel and its restaurant operations. So the owners are interested in learning the relationship between the number of rooms occupied and the revenue per day that the restaurant generates. So they sample 10 days and then the restaurant income or the revenue is going to be our independent, independent variable, the X axis. Um, so it's our first column on our table. And then the amount of rooms occupied is our Y, y axis. Um, so it's the second column. I wrote out additional columns just because it makes it easier to solve for all of these pieces when I can write everything out. Um, so to save time, I calculated X bar ahead of time. It is 1,424.4 and our Y bar is 32.4. So all I did was add up all of these numbers and divide by 10. These are the averages. So now I'm going to be taking the number in the first column minus my X bar. So for the first, for the first number, it's going to be 27.6 negative 63.4. So to save some time, I went through and finished putting all of these totals in. So obviously for my Y minus Y bar column, I just went in and subtracted this value by my Y bar and got this and did that the whole way down the column. And then I multiplied this number and this number together to get this value. You'll know you did it correctly if these columns add up to zero, which they should. And then the total of this column is the number we're going to want to use. So in this case, it's negative 860.6. So this is gonna be in our numerator. Um, I went ahead and found the standard deviations. So our SX value is 41.2046. And then our SY value is 11.345. So now we can just plug all of these numbers in and find our correlation coefficient. So it's going to be negative 860.6 divided by n minus one is nine. And then we'll multiply together 41.2046 and 11.345. So after we plug that into our calculator, we will get an R value of negative 0 0.20455. So it is negative, but it's also fairly small. So from this, we can gather that it's a rather weak negative correlation. So just to demonstrate this, I put all of my numbers into Excel so I could plot them on a scatter diagram. So this is the scatter diagram. There's only 10 points, um, but as you can see, they're pretty spaced out, slight, slightly negative, but not a super strong relationship. So now let's say we want to see if this could be a random sampling error. Our sample size was only 10 people or 10 days. So it's a fairly small sample size. So maybe it could be a bad batch of days um, as far as looking at the relationship between revenue and the amount of rooms occupied. So we will look at our generate a null and alternate hypothesis and then look at our test statistic and calculate our T value to determine that. So we know we sampled 10 days our degrees of freedom is N minus two in this case. So we'll be looking at eight. Um, our null hypothesis is rho equals zero. So it's going to be a two-tailed um, two hypothesis 
at the 0 0.05 significance level, so at eight. So we can tell that our test statistic is 2.306. So now if we go over here, we can figure out whether or not to reject or fail to reject our null and null, hypo null hypothesis, sorry. So our R value we already calculated is negative, oops, sorry, negative 0 0.2045 in the square root, it's going to be eight divided by one minus negative 0 0.2045 squared. This is also square root. Um, so when we plug all of these numbers in, we get a T value of negative 0 0.591. So that's what we'll be comparing to our distribution. So because we calculated that the test statistic was 2.306 and we know it's two-tailed, we have to compare it to negative 2.306 and positive. So negative 0 0.591 falls all the way in here. So in this case, we would fail to reject our... Uh, null hypothesis, uh, basically just solidifying that it's not a significantly strong relationship. Uh, let's go back to PowerPoint. 